A while back I was at Family Pharmacy in Stanley Town and uh, I was getting ready to leave and uh, getting ready to pull out from, from that parking lot and before I pulled out a car was barreling down the road from Maxway. You know where I am right now? It's barreling down from Maxway and uh, he was coming. Now I had time to stop and, and actually put it in reverse and, and back up a little because I was going to pull out and I really didn't see the, the car, but I had plenty of time to back it up. He was blowing that horn all the way down and if the windows was down, whoo, you could have heard all this cussing and you could see you could if you read lips wow you could have read something you did not want to share with your mother <laughs> and so it was like it was all in slow motion I mean yeah, he was he was mad and and he was going down the road and I was I was like really dude what what is this and so then I thought, well, I'll have a little fun with it. And, and so as he went by, I went, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was waving, and all of a sudden he come to a screeching halt, stopped the car, got out of the car, and was coming at me. <laughs> I thought to myself, wow, <laughs> wow, and, and he became a Frank. You know what a Frank is? <laughs> Let me show you Frank. That's Frank right there. He became a Frank. Now, I don't know, I didn't really need to know much about this cat to know that his anger had very little to do with me. He was angry long before he got to me. I just, I just tipped him off. Or you could say another word. <laughs> And we have all seen this, haven't we? We've all truly have seen this. We, we've seen it in, in our families. We, we've seen it out in public. We've even seen it in ourselves, in stores or in work or, or with family. You know, that's one of the reasons I don't like Walmart. I become a Frank in Walmart, you know? I can't stand Walmart, especially when you have 26 lanes and two are open. Oh! So I try to stay away from Franks. And so I try to stay away from Walmart. But you see, this is something that is serious in the Word of God. It's something serious uh, for us to take. And I want us to turn to Matthew 5. It's, it's talking about, you know, this is the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes sermon, or you could call it the Sermon on the Mount. It is, it is basically how a Christian should be. It is how you are to be Christ-like. And it says, starting at verse 21, we don't read through this whole section it seems like because this is serious stuff we need to deal with our anger we need to deal with that emotion and grab a hold of it harness it rein it in because that's why the Holy Spirit is within it says in verse 21, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, or whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable for judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, Raka, you will be liable to hell of fire. Wow. If you look at before that passage, it says, starting verse 20, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, 
you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's so many times we think to ourselves, well, I'm automatic. No! The Word of God says you need to deal with some things. You truly need to deal with things. You truly will see if your heart is regenerated or not. You truly will see if you are born again. And it comes with the first on the Sermon on the Mount about the anger. How do you deal with your anger? Everybody gets angry at some time or point. Everybody gets frustrated. How do you deal with it? You know, so many times I, I, I hear this all the time that people will say, well, Jesus said not to get angry, but he really didn't mean it for me. Or, or it's not fair. I, I can't do it. That's, I was born that way. Amen. Well, I ask you to be reborn. Amen. Simple as that. You can't use that excuse. You are to be born again. You are to be born again. It starts within, within. Or, or we do the opposite. We say, well, what about righteous anger? There are times that we should get angry. The problem is, some people, and I won't mention names, think when they get angry, it is always correct or righteous. We can always justify getting angry even when it's not right. We can always justify right in our eyes when in God's eyes it's not right. Let me be clear as what the Scriptures is saying with anger. There is a place for anger. For most of the time, you are angry. And it also says, be angry sometimes, but do not sin, Ephesians 4, 6 says. But let's also make it clear as well, even with Ephesians 4, 6, it says, you can get angry, do not sin, but do not let the wrath of anger go without you going into bed or something like that. Go ahead and go read it. Do not go to bed angry, basically is what it's saying. Do not go to bed. Do not let it be habitual. Do not let it prolong. Do not let it go with you and control you. That is what that is saying to us. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. I think that's what it says. You see, Jesus is not saying anger is the problem. Really, that is not the problem. It's where we go with it. It's what we do with it. That is the problem. It's where we do not put Jesus first. Rather, we do what we think is right. Jesus says, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, Hebrews 10.30 says. You see, anger gives the devil a foothold. And if you let it go, if you let, don't deal with it before the night's in or before you go to bed, it becomes a stronghold in your life. Amen. Amen. And when it becomes a stronghold in your life, you hinder your life with Jesus. You hinder your life with one another. You hinder healing, joy, all kinds of things because it becomes a stronghold. It compromises our witness. It steals our joy. It impedes our healing. James 1, 19-20 says, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. We all get angry. But what do you do with it? Do you allow anger or any emotion control you? Or do you allow Jesus to control you? 
Now, if you look at this Greek word in anger in the, in the Beatitudes here where it says, uh, do, not let, do not be angry, it, it's telling you, it gives you a phrase in the Greek, host de av. Host de av. And when you look that up, it's telling you that this is not a person who had a bad day and, and gets frustrated and angry. You, you are allowed to do that even. This is a person who is bitter, that is developing, developing, continuing a grudge. He, is, he or she is nursing and feeding malice, disrespect, hostility. This person is consumed with anger, who has a low-grade bowling rage. That's what that word means. A low-grade bowling rage that is uncontrollable. He carry it, or she carries it, with you wherever you go, and it controls you. That's the anger that is speaking of on the Sermon of the Mount. Look at that. It controls you. It controls your actions. It controls what you think of that person. It controls you sticking up your nose and walking on. It controls you and how you talk about that person later. It controls you in so many ways. And we just mark it off like it's no big deal. This says you can be liable for the hell of fire. You know, if you look in the side note here, if you keep reading uh, all the things that he talks about, look at verse 27 through 30. It, it talks about lust. It's the same thing with lust. Lust that controls you can send you to hell. Lust that controls you can send you to hell. Again, this is, not, this is not a big thing, so to speak, because everybody has this philosophy that there's no way that uh, however you act or what you do can send you to hell. This is, but it's in God's Word. And again, this lust thing, it's, it's not that you admire beauty, is that you lust. You know, it, it, you know there's a difference between admiring beauty versus I'm lusting. Right? It's one thing to, for, for a man to, to look at a, a lady and say, Oh, she looks nice today. Glory to God for attractiveness. Praise God. <laughs> But it's another thing for a woman to walk by and the guy goes, oh, oh my goodness, what, Woo! look at her, man, she is hot, touchy, Bridget, <laughs> hey, woo, there, there's a difference there, amen, there's a huge difference there. And it's not just a guy thing. This can also be a girl thing. Ladies can lust too. <laughs> Ladies can lust too. Mm-hmm. You know, the best story of this is, is uh, David and Bathsheba, isn't it? What did David do? He wasn't admiring uh, beauty. What did his actions move him to do? To kill Bathsheba's husband. To put him basically on the front line to get the bus to run over him type of thing. So that he could have the wife. Isn't that amazing? Now, now with a with a girl, with a, with you know, girls. I'm talking to you now. Why do you wear what you wear sometimes? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, do you want guys to lust 
all the time. I mean, it's one thing to be attractive and to dress attractive, but it's another thing to just show everything you have. And then you wonder, you wonder why people are looking at you. I mean, honestly, in your heart, you need to ask yourself, why do you dress the way that you dress? And yes, for some men, they can lust after a tree or something. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Sometimes it's hard truths that we need to hear. And those men, those men really need to, to deal with this. But it's another thing with what you're doing in God's eyes. Now I'm going to get off this lust thing because it's bothering me. I, I want to go back to the anger. Let's go back to the verse 21. Because it's the same with anger. It's the same with anger. Does anger control you? Does anger control you? Purposely anger is wrong. And here's the thing. You can say, I'm a Christian until the cows come home. But God, the Word of God says, you cannot live with this settled anger and be of Him. You cannot be a Christian and live with settled anger. You cannot be a Christian and be in unforgiveness all the time. Amen. This low-grade bowling rage that consumes you, that's your God, not Jesus. That's your God. Look at the scriptures closer. It says this, you will be liable. It says, if you are angry with your brothers and sisters, you will be liable to judgment. Liable to judgment. We don't talk about this because we don't think we should be accountable or anything. But what does liable to judgment mean? It means there will be a determination in judgment after death as to whether any act of killing was murder or not. In other words, you can kill a person with malice. You can kill a person with malice. And you will be judged by it. Malice is when you deliberately start something against another with intentions to destroy reputation, destroy the truth, destroy the personal integrity of others. You can even do that with God because you're angry with Him. This person has in their heart to whom they are angry with that that person should be dead or hurt. Do you feel that way towards anyone? Don't, don't raise your hand. But do you feel that way towards anyone? You need to repent. Simple as that. Then it goes on and says, If you insult a brother and sister, you will be liable to the council. You'll be liable not only to judgment, but judgment in the now. Judgment in the now. I mean, it, it's, it's a great example of this, and I think I was the last generation. But when you got in trouble at school, you got the big paddle with the holes in it on the bottom. And then when you go home, you get mama. And she takes a whip and whips you. And then when daddy gets home, you get another for good measure. At least that's the way it was in my house. We don't have that today now because we have princesses and princesses. Amen. But that's what that... <laughs> Amen, sister! Woo! <laughs> But that's what that counsel means. You're, you're not only judged afterwards, you're judged now. And then it goes into that rock. Rock. Now, now I, know, I know today we probably don't have that. You don't, you don't really say to someone, Rock. You are such a rock today. Do we? 
We don't ever say that. Some translation says fool in the scriptures, fool. But it's it's really it's really hard to there's not a modern equivalent word in our translation for rotka. And the best translation you see in the Greek, it's, it means brainless idiot, bonehead, that you feel superior to. Fool, fool just doesn't grab it, what raka really means. Brainless idiot, bonehead, that you feel superior to. You feel superior. You feel like you want to spit on them because they are below you that much. Does that make sense to you? It's not so much the word itself. It is the revealing, the revealing of one's own heart that you are in judgment of yourself with God. When you are willing to say raka to someone, you are in judgment of yourself. You, you, it is revealing to you, to your heart, to do something about it, to get with God, to get going with God. You know, and what gets me is we're not converted to Christianity. We are converted to be like Christ. There's a huge difference. We want to stick on that, oh, I'm a Christian and I've been converted to Christian and I've been saved for umpteen million years and I'm a Christian and I'm a Christian. Are you like Christ? Because that's the most important thing. Are you living? Are you trying to pursue the goals that Christ shows you, gives you, that you have to have the Holy Spirit to do. Amen. It's not so much the words that we say, it's the revealing of our own hearts that Jesus is preaching to. Do you control anger? Whether you do or don't shows in your heart your attitude and your faith unto Jesus Christ. Because anger is a problem for all of us. For all of us. And we all have bad days. We all get frustrated. This anger is not about temporary transit emotion. It is about habitual despising one another and loathing one another. I mean, think about it this way. If someone says a person's name that you don't like, that you are angry with or, or disagree with, do you loathe them? Do you say out loud, oh my gosh, I can't stand that person. <laughs> Do you, do you say, oh, don't even speak that person's name to me. Do you say, oh, they are such a rocker, fill in the blank. Or how about, do you turn the other way? Purposely. <laughs> Purposely you turn the other way. You're walking down and, and the person on the right of you, you, you don't like, so you, you're constantly to your left. Hey, brother, it's good to see you. Hey, sister, it's good to see you. Uh, I'm not even going to pay attention to that person. I know that person's there, but I'm not going to pay attention to that person. No, 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 no. I cannot see that person. You're not, you don't exist to me. I'm not going to see you. <laughs> Guess what's controlling you? Is it Jesus? No. You see that last one where it says, when you begin to call people Radka, you are liable to the hail of fire. That's the most serious place that you don't want to be. You are liable to to even that judgment. 
if you're rolling your eyes about people, if you're, if you're purposely not going and shaking other people's hands, if you're, if you're constantly saying people's names in a raka attitude, you need to repent. It's that simple. That's simple. See, the problem is a Christian shouldn't get angry. We live in a fallen world. We will have bad days. But when that becomes habitual, it controls you. Do you live with a health and a health with your anger as the Holy Spirit moves you? Or you just live like everybody else? And you just go off anytime you please. You're just controlled by your anger. You're just controlled by your emotion. You're just controlled by your lust. You're just controlled by what you want to do. Sin is not just action. It is attitude. That is why Jesus started with, You have heard that it was said, You shall not murder. I say to you, It starts in the heart. It's already a sin before it becomes an action. You cannot be a Christian and live with this boiled, settled anger. You cannot be a Cain to an Abel in the heart. Listen, people have simple hearts and we are drawn to the wrong direction. We all need the Holy Spirit to draw us closer to God. We all need it. We all need it. Forgiving people should be forgiving people. And sometimes you don't want to do it. There are people in my life that I, I just don't want to speak to because they've always been mean to me. They've always had this raka attitude towards me. But God tells me I need to speak. God tells me I need to let things go. God tells me I, I got to do this. Amen. For some it does take time, but it shouldn't take you years, two years, three years. It shouldn't be that you haven't spoken to your, your family for 20 years. It shouldn't be that I'm not going to get with my family because I can't stand my family because they, are, they remind me of Rodka. Today, it's just simple. We need to deal with sin. And the sin that we need to deal with today is anger and or lust. And so, I want you to be reminded that you're not converted to Christianity. You're converted to be like Christ. And it's here that we equip the saints. It's here that we need to repent. It's here that we need to get right with God. Amen. So today as the piano plays, I want us to first to have prayer. And as you hear this prayer, I want you to respond. Simple as that. You, I don't want you to respond if you, if you feel like the word of God that's just been preached is, is irrelevant. I don't want you to respond uh, if you, you feel like uh, you shouldn't, even though sometimes if we go by feeling, then, Lord, we're in a lot of trouble. But I want you to truly do it because you fear God. You want to get right with God. You want to actually be in church where we can repent come to Jesus clear and new. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the life you have given us. Help us to live in it. Help us to be in the Holy Spirit. Help us to be more like you. Our world needs to see Jesus. Let it first start with us. And if we have committed the sins we have talked about today, help us to diligently get our hearts right. Many of us have been in prison 
struggling with anger, hatred, loss, bitterness. That prison is a prison that we put on ourselves. Set us free, O oh God. Set the prisoners free, O oh God. Those prisoners are ourselves. Help us to seek you. Help us to repent right now and hear our prayers, O oh God. Help us to act in obedience with faith and courage. So at this time, in the act of obedience, I ask for those who hear this message loud and clear to just raise their hand if they are in need of repentance and are willing to work on anger, on lust. Lord, we thank you for these hands. We thank you for these hands. Keep these hands up because, Lord, you see these hands and you know the backstory of what's going on in our lives. I pray you help each and one to forgive, to overcome, to let us see the power of forgiveness. We invite your spirit into these hearts to change lives, to see transformation, to be Christ-like. Change lives, oh God. Heal marriages, oh God. And consume us with fear of the Lord. God, we thank you and we love you. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. I thank you. I thank you for being sincere with God today. May you truly feel the cleanness, the purity, and the love as we forgive. As we draw a close to anger. And as we give it to God, because that is what sons and daughters of God do. We're not just hearers, we're doers.